My name is Donnie Evers, NFL veteran from the Kansas City Chiefs and San Diego Chargers. For the last 13 years, I've been taking our World War II veterans back to their battlefields to honor them and to give them hope. Our experiences are deeply embedded in our heart. I could have killed him right there. I feel a little fearful of telling that story. What would the general commander say to me if he knew that I did that? You were the first one out of the plane. Yeah. On D-Day. Yeah. I'm Tom Rice. This is World War II through my eyes. It's a strange situation where six armies of six countries asked their youth to jump from airplanes in a land that they know nothing about and fight a little bit late but uh, they did come in strength, and to ask them to drop to the swamp infested areas in gliders, and 167,000 men to plant their boots on five beaches and make sense out of every, everything that they did because they were so well trained. It's a difficult situation to continue to go over the stories that uh, are in our minds. Our experiences are deeply embedded in our hearts. They're never going to go away. I don't care how you slice us vertically or horizontally, they are here to stay. Uh, in training, our officers uh, put uh, chaos in front of us every two or three days. And we were to work our way through chaos and reduce the chaos to danger and then record the methodology that we use to reduce that chaos to danger to log that in the back of the convoluted areas of our mind where uh, uh, soldiers very seldom go and store it. Do the little things and when the big things come along you can handle them. And so uh, we've got it reduced to a danger. Do the same thing and reduce the danger to something inconvenient by calling upon those things that you had logged away in the back of your mind and then reduce the inconvenience to something to forget and get on with it. And I did it in Holland, uh, crossing a uh, barbed wire fence. We moved from an uh, 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 Erdy, Scheindel area south of, uh, of uh, Ar Arnhem, and because uh, the Germans had broken through at uh, Uden, so we had to go up there and stop them as best we could. Uh, they were in a, a situation that they could cross the dike and come over the roadway and uh, get in behind the Scottish Black Watch Regiment, which were uh, outstanding uh, uh, people. I'm going to draw a diagram of what happened on a great big sheet of paper. This is the, uh, the right bank. there, yeah. yeah. And then there was a dike here. That's, dike right? Over there. That's right, a dike over there, and there was a break in the dike. And the Germans ran the tank back and forth here to yes, keep us that, awake all night. That's on the end, that's a tunnel. And there was a house, two-story house across there, and I asked Captain Phillips if I could, I, I was afraid they, they, they were observing us from here. So I asked him if I could borrow the, the British Piat gun and fire it. He said, yeah, go ahead. So I loaded it and fired it, and I put it through a window. And uh, it was not used, the house was not used again. <laughs> we, we can walk we walk up? up? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we can. You want to walk yeah, up? Darn right. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let's do it. Or we take that car. Huh? No, let's walk. Let's walk. So what was it like for you to go back there all, all these years later? To go back again, and uh, rush up there and uh, survey the land that uh, we were uh, operating in. We got in behind where the Black Watch, for the most part, people had moved out, uh, called Coffin Corner, and then moved toward A and B Company. And in so doing, I got caught on a, on a barbed wire fence. Uh, I couldn't get off of there because the flare went up, and so I just made like a broken down old apple tree. Yeah, I had my hands up in the air and moving back and forth like that in, in, in the breeze. Yeah. And uh, so I, I was visible for sure because the flare was up in about 150 feet 
uh, in the air and about 50 yards or so from uh, my position. Mm. So it was, a, it was a ticklish situation. When that flare went out, I got off that barbed wire fence <laughs> as best I could and tearing my pants up. <laughs> so, and Germans ran a tank back and forth here, day and night, just to keep us awake. We didn't have any sleep at all. This, this is the picture of the tank. Oh yeah. You see, this is standing yeah. there because they, that's the tank they knocked out. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a barn over here. Yeah. There is a small. Yeah, that's gone now. Yeah. Because that in that days it was a swampy area, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a sort of yeah. Swamp. Yeah, real swampy. You know that 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 train, the railroad still the same the bridge is right there and you saw even like um, um, I think you guys took a bazooka and try to take out one of the tanks and even the damage is still visible did a tank hit the, this that, that was a uh, British six pound shell that hit that Frank Carpenter got a hold of a uh, British six pounder and fired and he he missed and hit up here and it, it was not bore sighted to the tank so that shot went up and hit the uh, uh, railroad bridge, and that's uh, the hell. The, sh the hole is still there and visible. He was given a, uh, a silver star on the basis of that. We ran patrols out to the brick factory and back. We ran patrols down the road and back to maybe as far as Hetheran or maybe. Yeah, that, that's that's Hetheran. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. And there was a fellow here by the name of uh, Nelson. He he had been stabbed and was injured and we're throwing hand grenades on the other side and look how steep that is and the hand grenades would roll down we'd tie string on them pull them back up and get them i mean you have two bullet holes in your body defending america you know which um is strong and i'm so grateful for it tom you know um being born and raised here in san diego where you were born <laughs> 99 years ago, it's just special, you know, because look at my life and the opportunity that I've been able to have to play football, to go to UCLA, you know, to play all these years in the NFL and to have this platform to give back, to say thank you to guys like yourself for giving me the opportunity, just opportunity. I mean, this is America. You know, it's gonna give you anything. If you want it, if you have the opportunity, you can go get it. And I was fortunate because of what you did and, my, and, and your brothers and my, my grandfather to have this opportunity you know, to live the American dream. And I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful. Yeah, oh, thank you for getting us here. <laughs> ah, it's an honor to get you back here. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. First time back since the war. And, yeah. And you remember everything. We were a close combat group coming from Toccoa, Georgia. I loved the sound of their rifle because I knew it would give me security on my right and give me security on my left. The most dangerous thing was to take a patrol behind German lines and try to bring them back to your own lines by walking through a German minefield before dusk. <laughs> I can't even imagine that. <laughs> I can't even imagine that. Well, we were models for our generation. And uh, the American public needed a hero or some heroes. There are monuments all over the United States that represent uh, the things that we did and how we did them and uh, when we did them, and in Europe was just covered the same way. So they will carry it on from generation to generation. We, in our own thoughts, are very proud of what we did, how we did it, and uh, when we did it. When we jumped, numbers one through nine are to walk in the direction of the flight. Impossible. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, With which one? your hedgerows and everything <laughs> you can imagine. And at night. You know, <laughs> that was crazy. Right. And you were the first, sorry, just go back. You were the first one out of the plane yeah. on D-Day. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. When I left the airplane, I weighed 276 pounds. I, I, my normal weight was 137. The, 100, the rest of the 137 was uh, 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 equipment. So uh, the first two guys I met was number two and number three, man. Tony Dust and Frank Ficarota, I heard the click of the crickets, you know, and uh, <clears throat> we waited, and we waited to hear their sound, and we clicked back. So we click, click, click toward each other until we got about 10 feet. Then we got to and hugged each other, and, and I found out it was most of the guys that came from the same aircraft. One of them had a hand grenade that was a pin pulled, 
and you can't put a pin back in a hand grenade. So he had a hold of that spoon and was squeezing it tight. So I said, give it to me. And I got everybody down and, and uh, rolled over on the road and dropped it in the canal. And it exploded in five seconds. And we got reorganized and we broke up into groups of two or three. And our objective was to play cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians, round them up, seek them out and destroy them. And if they didn't want to go, shoot them up and police them up. We played the game fair. One instance in Holland, there was a German uh, that was uh, moving from my right to my left as I faced in his direction. Uh, he was the biggest guy I've ever seen. And he had a couple boxes in his hands and uh, I observed he was not armed. He had no uh, uh, rifle, nor did he have any sidearms. I was 50 yards from him. Jeffrey Thompson? Yeah, I could have killed him right there. I, I, I did not shoot him. I let him go. Why? So, uh, I feel a little fearful of telling that story because uh, what would the company commander say to me? What would Colonel Johnson do? What would the general commander of uh, the 101st say to me if, we, if he knew that I did that? To uh, have a organization such as uh, Best Defense to take care of us and pay for everything which we couldn't afford was a magnificent thing. I mean, because you guys created the history. If you think about it, you guys created history. You see all those people, because I just remember going into Maastricht and it was just wall to wall to wall people. And they had the parade, the planes were flying through, the music was playing. They were 10 deep on the highway and in the, in the streets. I doubt if there was anyone uh, still in their houses during this, uh, this parade. And then remember the confetti yeah. that was coming up and everything? I mean, it, it, this was like, the homecoming um, that you guys never really received. I mean, this was incredible. It uh, helped us bring about closure, one more step toward closure of our experiences. And so if we could talk about it and in conjunction with the rest of the fellows who could add to it and had similar experiences, it helped us all reach deep into our hearts, give it a squeeze. And we're so proud of the things that you did for us. I'm Tom Rice. This is World War II through my eyes. <laughs>